So what payment structure or salary would you pay your acquisition slash sales person? Um, so one of the things I think we do a lot of times when, when we start this business is we want everybody to be 1099 commission only. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it sends a, a, a dangerous signal. It's like, I don't, what, I don't have the confidence in your ability to perform, so you're only able to make money if I make money. I think it's broken. I think you should hire acquisitions people, pay them three to $6,000 training salary, right? Because a lot of these people that you're hiring um, probably already have a decent job, mm-hmm. right? Um, so in order to get them to make the move to come over and work for you, if you hire them a, say, three to $5,000 training salary for 90 days where they don't have to pay it back, they can actually focus on learning the job and not be stressed out about making a couple bucks to cover their bills. Then what we do is we have a blended salary and commission percentage, um, and they can choose that. So if it's salary and commission, the commission percentage is a little bit less. For some of our more spirited entrepreneurs, they can go 100% commission. And then what we have is a 10, 12, and 15% payment plan for acquisitions. I don't mean to talk too fast, but I know we don't have a ton of time, and I yeah. think this is an important question. So they, if they generate $100,000 to $150,000 in monthly revenue, they get 10%. Once they go over the 150 mark, they go to 12% all the way up to 200. So they get 12% on the full $199,000. Oh. Right? So, so it's it a $4,000 bump. It's retro. Um, the, then, then once they go from 201 to 250, if they hit 251, they go to 15%. So if someone does $250,000 in a month, that 5% difference on $250,000 is $12,000 but they only get it if the team hits their goal. So the team has to hit a half a million dollars Mm -hmm. for the individual to get their individual bonus. Interesting. Yeah, right? So um, that's how I pay, but generally, uh, I think across the industry, 10% is like the average for acquisitions agent. I would encourage you to have an incentive plan so where if they push for and hit revenue numbers that are well above, or not well above, but reasonably above their expectation, that they should get some type of incentive and 12% is a, is a, is a reasonable amount to share with them. And the same question for lead manager. Uh, so lead managers, we pay, I, I think today in order to get anybody um, of reasonable value, it's, you got to pay 20 bucks an hour. Right. So, and remember these are sales positions. So I think for lead managers, you're going to be somewhere between 17 and 20 bucks an hour, depending on the market that you're in. Um, and then we pay a appointment bonus attended appointment bonus because that's their sale. So that's like that's like an acquisitions guy getting a closing, getting an appointment for a lead manager or an inside sales agent is their sale. So mm-hmm. we pay them for attended appointments. Um, I think it's $25 per appointment. So if they schedule 15 appointments a week, that's a lot of money. And then they get $100 per closing. So if, they, if their attended appointment ends up in a closing, they get paid. Yeah. Um, so our lead managers can make $70,000, $75,000 a year, work nine to five and not have the pressure of an acquisitions or a full blown um, outside salesperson. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and you're, you're talking about, you know, they're selling appointments. That's one of the things that, you know, we have our lead manager training program, something I'm doing with Jason Lewis. Yeah. Um, and the first thing we talk about as far as mindset goes is like, you guys are not setting appointments. You guys are not booking appointments. You guys are selling appointments. Right. Uh, so I love that you're using that same language. Yeah. Um, on IG, we got uh, Vicance. How do you hire a sales rep on commission basis? How do you hire a sales rep on a commission basis? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not 100% sure how to answer that Probably question. the question is, how are you sourcing them? So it, it comes from uh, social media for me. Yeah. Um, one of the other things, too, one of the more brilliant people I've ever met in real estate who's in Collective Genius, uh, Phil Green and Eric Guideson, um, they get what they call forced referrals from their people. Like, they literally sit down their best salespeople and go, I need 50 of your Facebook friends by 5 o'clock or you're out of here, right? It's like <laughs> an old an old, old showdown. Um, but literally, um, what we really do is we want to create employees that create employees. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would tell you that probably seven or eight out of our last 10 hires at any sales position in the company has come from a direct referral. Um, So I I would tell you to um, network heavily, um, which you should be doing anyway as a wholesaler or real estate investor out there. Um, There's a lot of 
wholesalers that work for themselves that would love the opportunity to come work somewhere where they would have someone take on the lion's share of the ownership responsibility and stress. So one thing you can do is try and hire other wholesalers as yeah. employees. We generally shy away from that because we feel like they're going to leave us, but it goes back to what we talked about earlier. If you hire the right person and you lead and train them and manage them in a way that they don't want to leave, um, you got to eliminate the risk of them going out on their own. 